Uh, don't expect it to be a jump like we had with Hydroid, where you know he went uh, from zero to here. Let's talk about it, shall we? All right, so the moment has finally arrived. After years at the bottom of the tier list, Anaros finally got his well-deserved rework, and it is awesome. He actually might even rival Revenant in some situations now. So, in today's guide, we're gonna look at everything about the new Anaros, his abilities, how he changed, and of course, I have builds. Multiple builds, budget builds, good builds, so what are we waiting for? A big shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, and now let's jump right into it. As per usual, the first thing we're gonna take a look at are his abilities, starting out with his passive, which hasn't really changed on paper, but in reality it's way better now. See, Anaros, when he dies, he actually does not die. He turns into his sand form, so to speak, and now, since the update, you're not stationary anymore, you can run around and hit enemies with melee attacks. However, now, it doesn't matter anymore how much damage you do, only how many melee hits you score, and if you score enough melee hits and this meter in the middle of the screen is full, then you get revived again. Now, what needs to be said here is, if you die a lot of times in a quick succession, then the time that you have to actually get enough melee hits in to revive yourself will be reduced, so it's still not a constant get out of jail free card, but it's good enough to prevent you from failing the mission if you accidentally lose track of your health or you die to an Eximus unit that just nukes you away one hit from the map. This, going forward, should not be a problem anymore. Anaro's first ability goes by the name Desiccation, and this one is pretty much the only one that hasn't really changed much, it still works the same way as before. You throw sand, and this sand then blinds enemies that you throw it at, so they cannot attack you for a while, and also it regenerates a little teetsy tiny bit of health, but it's really not worth mentioning. This is basically a weaker version of Excalibur's Radial Blind. Also, even though I'm sure you're aware of that, I just want to say it anyway, enemies that are blinded by the sand are open for melee finishers, and if you score a melee finisher kill, you regenerate 20% of your maximum HP. So this is a great skill to keep yourself alive. However, what it does have is a new augment mod by the name Desiccation's Curse, and what this does is, if you kill a blinded enemy, then a creature called Swarm Cabat is going to be spawned, this is basically a sand cat, and this cat will follow you around for a while like a companion, and will attack nearby enemies and at the same time spread Scarab Swarm. Now keep that in mind for a second, Scarab Swarm is actually his fourth ability, so we're going to talk about this here in a second. First, however, let's look at his second ability, which now is his previously third ability, Sandstorm. Now, your Sandstorm will not just randomly fling enemies around and they land in the opposite corner of the room, right? Now, this Sandstorm actually pulls the enemies in and they land exactly at your feet when the Sandstorm is over. This is a pretty decent grouping ability, it's not the best grouping ability in the game, but it's nice that he has one, and especially when you play a melee build on him, it's really nice that all the enemies lie on the floor in front of you after the skill is over, so you have a lot of opportunities to get ground finishes against them. However, if you're not going for melee and you're actually playing Anaros with a ranged weapon, then this skill will not be all that useful, maybe you want to use a different grouping ability like Korra's Ensnare via the helmet system, because with a gun playstyle you really want a headshot and when the enemies are lying on the floor in front of you, headshotting is going to be a little bit different, so keep that one in mind. Also, the Sandstorm has an augment, which increases the range and makes that it inflicts the status effects that you have on your melee weapon to the enemies in the tornado. Now, this might be nice for room-wide status application, but I personally think it's not all that great and not really worth the mod slot because we have so many different ways of status application by now that we don't need this specific skill for it. And when it comes to the damage that it actually deals with the slashes on your melee weapon, even on very high ability strengths, this is nothing to write home about. Skill number three is his Scarab Armor. At first, it looks quite similar to how it has been before. You sacrifice some of your health and therefore you get additional armor. Now, in the past, there was an augment mod for Scarab Armor, which made it that whenever you took a status effect from an enemy, you would lose a little bit of that armor, but therefore the status effect would be negated. For example, you could not be knocked down. This is now not part of the Augment mod anymore, but in the ability by default. So now, with Scarab Armor, you're immune against any type of status effects as long as you have it up. That is really nice. As for the Augment, this has drastically been changed now and we need a minute to kind of unwrap what is included in it now. See, what the new Augment does is basically a second layer of death protection on top of your passive ability. 
if you take lethal damage, aka if your health goes down to zero and you would actually be dead now, this one makes that you become invincible for a short period of time, you get full health back, but, and this is the trick here, once the invincibility period is over, you will be inflicted with a slash proc that is so strong that over its six second duration, it will take away all the health that you have, ending you up dead again unless you do something in those six seconds to regain your health so that you're actually not dying. In theory, I really like the thought behind this, but in practice, this mod cannot protect you from death all the time because the effect of this augment mod has a 30 second cooldown. But now, let's go on to his fourth ability, Scarab Swarm, which is the big new tool that he got in the update and it is really, really strong. See, Scarab Swarm casts out Anaurus's, well, Scarab Swarm, that attacks enemies, locks them down in place, and every enemy that is afflicted by this will constantly get automatic corrosive status effects, kind of a little bit like Serin's spores, for example. These scarabs also automatically spread between nearby enemies, and if you kill an enemy affected by scarab swarm, then this enemy will spread the scarabs even further. However, also when you get a kill, you have a chance of spawning one of these sand cats that I mentioned in the augment for his first ability, which will run around, attack nearby enemies, like they're your companion, and also spread this scarab swarm effect. And just by the way, these cats are darn strong. Just look at how they one-shot a Steel Path 180 heavy gunner as soon as they're out of armor. In my personal opinion, the new Scarab Swarm is the heart of Anaurus' kit, it is a great crowd control, and it's awesome to full strip the armor of an entire room of heavily armored Steel Path enemies. Now, I personally don't really think we need to talk about Anaurus' gameplay right here, because, you know, he's pretty straightforward and in terms of gameplay hasn't changed all that much compared to before. So how about we just jump right into the builds, starting out with our budget-friendly option. First and foremost, of course, Inaros is a health and armor tank. So in order to keep him alive, what we need to do is make sure he has a lot of health and armor and also some way of regenerating his health. That's why in this budget build, we went with Physique in the Aura, Vigor, Steel Fiber, Vitality, Gladiator Resolve and Carnis Carpus, all of these mods just to increase his health and his armor. This makes him quite tanky. In addition to that, we gave him overextended because his Scarab Swarm, which, you know, crowd controls the entire room and spreads corrosive, works very nice if you give it a little bit more range. And in order to compensate for this loss in strength, we gave him Intensify. Now, since his fourth skill is quite expensive to cast at 100 energy, the last mod in the budget build would be Hunter Adrenaline. This one gives you energy back whenever your health takes damage. And, you know, since Inaros has a lot of health and takes a lot of health damage all the time, this basically guarantees you that you will always have energy to cast all of your skills. Now, this build definitely works in Steel Path, however, I wouldn't expect too much from it because Inaros is the frame that really only starts to shine at a lot of high investment. And just by the way, I would be super happy if you could maybe spare a like because it helps the video a huge ton with the YouTube algorithm, so cheers so much for your support. But now, let's actually take a look at the more high investment builds. Alright, so one thing I absolutely have to mention here is that Anaros is very, very versatile. There is no one specific build to make him work that is objectively better than anything else, like some other frames have. You could really make anything work on him to some extent. So what we're gonna do in this section of the video is, I first show you a very potent core of a build that can be expanded upon, and then we look at multiple specialized builds based on this core in some way or another. This right here would be the core that I like to use on Anaros. Prime Vigor, Umbral Vitality, Umbral Fiber, Gladiator Resolve, and Adaptation to give us a lot of health and armor and Adaptation as another layer of damage reduction on top. Then, just like with the budget build, overextended because the Scarab Swarm really likes more range and Hunter Adrenaline for the energy regeneration. The last mod slot, the Aura, the Exilus mod slot and both Arcane slots are completely open to be tuned in whatever way you personally desire. One option that would come to mind for me here, and that pretty much only works on Anaros, is actually using him as a sort of stat stick for your weapon. What I mean is, since you don't really need every mod slot he has just to make him work, right, you have a little bit of space for mods that actually don't benefit Anaros himself, but the weapons. For example, you could give him more mods from the Vigilante or Gladiator mod set, so that your weapons actually benefit more from those set bonuses. There's pretty much no other frame in the game where you can actually justify throwing away a mod slot just to buff up your weapon a bit. But Inaros, he can do this. 
Another thing that you could do with all these open slots is use them for something that doesn't cater to Inaros himself, but purely to the helmet ability that you want to use on him. For example, more ability strength if you want to use a strength-based ability like Roar, or duration if you want to make sure that whatever you use stays on for longer. If you like, you can let me know in the comments down below what you would actually put into these open mod slots here. Alright, so much for the core of the build. Up next, I want to talk about a very specialized, very, very, very tanky setup for him that became possible with this new update. This one uses the reworked version of Mirage's Eclipse via the helmet system. So before we jump into the build itself, let's actually talk about what the new Eclipse can do for Inaros. First of all, I'm fully aware that a lot of you don't appreciate the fact that the damage buff from Eclipse has been drastically reduced for the helmet version. However, for Inaros, we're actually not interested in the damage buff all that much, but in the protection. See, the old Eclipse was purely dependent on the light level. If you were standing in the light, you would get a damage buff. If you were standing in the shadow, you would get additional protection. However, now you can decide what you want. If you hold the ability button, you get the damage buff. If you just tap it, you get the protection. This consistency in the damage reduction that you can achieve with this is amazing, especially for a lot of Warframes that previously have been a little bit on the squishy side, because all of them can now use this to be much more tanky. And in the case of Inaros, what we get is basically 10,000 health, plus the armor that we have, plus adaptation, and now plus 75% additional damage reduction from Mirage's Eclipse. This is absolutely ludicrous, as you also see in the background right here, a comparison with and without the protection from Mirage's Eclipse. With this setup, I'm sure Inaros can survive anything except, of course, those long endurance missions where the enemy levels go into the multiple hundreds. Of course, a health tank cannot keep up with that, but like for 95% of the currently available content, this Inaros will be absolutely viable at the same level of survivability like, for example, Revenant, at least in my personal testing. This right here would be the build that I personally use with Anaros when using Eclipse. As you see, I switched out a couple of mods. For example, I went for Prime Continuity to give myself a little bit of additional duration. And, and this is really important if you want to make your Anaros as survivable as possible, Arcane Grace is an absolute godsend for this Warframe. See, I know it's a Platinum Arcane, I know it's rare and probably very expensive, especially after the rework, but Arcane Grace just heals so much health per second, especially with a frame like Inaros, who has a lot of maximum health anyway. If you have all of these layers of damage reduction, you know, armor, adaptation, eclipse, and then Arcane Grace on top of that to counter heal all the incoming damage, I personally cannot imagine that any enemy below level 400 would even be able to seriously scratch you. Also, teetsy tiny little tip, if you happen to have the mod Rage, I would recommend using that instead of Hunter Adrenaline, because it has basically the same number, but it uses up less mod space. But what if you don't want your Inaros to simply survive, but you actually want him to deal out massive damage, maybe even red crits, right? Well, then I have good news, because you absolutely can with the next build on our list. This right here is a melee focused build for Inaros using the helmet ability Wrathful Advance from Calervo. This ability gives you amazing amounts of melee crit chance based on your ability strength. This is also the reason why we use so many ability strength mods on this build right here. With all of these mods plus Mold Augmented combined, we get over 300% ability strength giving us constant red crits with our melee using Wrathful Advance plus Arcane Avenger given a fat plus 45% final crit chance on top of that. As you also see in the background right here, this build absolutely destroys everything. Is it the best melee build in the game? Of course not. Does it make Enaros the best melee frame in the game? Of course not, but is it fun to play him like that, not having to worry about dying at all and just enjoy the big red numbers? Absolutely. So if you like melee gameplay, give this one a try. But before we end the video right here, there is one more thing that I want to talk about and this is very important. In fact, it's a little tiny secret, or maybe not so much secret, that makes Anaros so so much stronger and in order to understand what I mean, we need to take a look at the Archon shards. The three blues are pretty straightforward, giving us more maximum energy, so we don't have to use a mod slot for that. But the interesting part here are the two green ones. Each one of these enables us to deal two more corrosive status effects per enemy. As we all know, by default, no enemy can have more than 10 corrosive procs on them at any given point. 
In order to fully reduce an enemy's armor down to 0% on just corrosive alone, you would actually need 14 corrosive effects. If we use two green Archon Shards, this increases the threshold of how many corrosive procs we can have per enemy up to 14, therefore enabling us to fully armor strip an enemy on just corrosion alone. And if we remember his Scarab Swarm, this thing spreads corrosion like crazy in the entire room, pretty much all by itself. So yeah, if you want to play him at peak performance, I personally would say it is a must to have two green Archon Shards on him to enable him to fully armor strip the entire room. The reworked Naros is an absolute beast. Just like the brand new Warframe Dante, about whom I've also made a crazy red crit build setup right here. So if you haven't already, then make sure to also check this one out. Another big shout out to Niels V, Demon Lord Zell, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Blind Waffle, Nost Linux Gaming, Lycan Shepard, Turtle Peer, Shadow Soul, JPT Kokeman, Pepperwolf 400, and all other generous channel members for your continuous support. We see each other hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.